South of the border, the stage is set in Chicago for the Democratic National Convention, where delegates will gather to officially nominate Kamala Harris and Tim Walls as their party's ticket. Now, the convention kicks off Monday at Chicago's United Center. Outgoing President Joe Biden will address the convention on the first night. First Lady Jill Biden is also expected to share a tribute to her husband for his more than 50 years of public service. Other notable speakers include former presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. The convention will end with Harris's speech on Thursday. Let's bring in Brian Calfano, political science and journalism professor at the University of Cincinnati. Professor, thank you as always for joining us. It's great to see you, Roger. Thanks. Uh, this convention is different than the convention we were looking at just two months ago. How much is it going to have changed from what they started out with? It's a big change, obviously. You've got now the bottom of the ticket leading the ticket. And if you look at the recent polling that's come out, even just this morning, you've got the ABC poll showing that Kamala Harris is now up by about four to five points over former President Trump. That is significant because you usually, as a candidate, get a bump in the polls after your convention. In this particular case, we're talking about right before, as you point out, Chicago getting ready for a four-day Democratic Party extravaganza. I don't know that you're going to end up seeing Harris get a five to six point bounce in the polls, anything along those lines. But the fact that she's able to have this kind of dominance across demographic groups before she even has her convention, this is really substantial. And these conventions eff effectively are these sort of product launches, if you will. You've got the candidates going out talking about what they want their vision of America to be like if they win the office. And they're introducing their running mates, as we've seen in both cases now. The conventions end up being what most people look for as the infomercial for the party and for the candidate. There's going to be nothing but strong, positive news coming out of the next four days for the Democrats. That does not work well for the Trump campaign and for Trump's political future at this point. And I want to get back to the convention. Is there anything Trump or, or the Republicans can do to def deflect that or take some of the steam away from what's going to happen at the con likely going to happen at the convention over the next few days? It's hard to see what could be the case in that, in that situation you're talking about because former President Trump has really gone out of his way to say whatever he thinks might change the news cycle and, and give him some positive attention, give him some press. And it's been really difficult for him over the past several weeks to do that. I think because we're entering a period of Trump fatigue. And I don't mean that people who like Trump necessarily are moving away from him. There's still millions of people in this country who support the former president and his policies, who are enthusiastic backers of his. This is going to be a competitive race, no doubt about it. But in terms of the president's ability to hijack, if you will, the media cycle and be able to drive media coverage in the manner that he's accustomed to, especially when he was in the White House, you know, that kind of power that's diminished. He's gotten a bit stale in the minds of some, even among some Republicans, thinking he needs to change up the way he goes about addressing the public and addressing the press. I don't see anything really the former president can do to change the narrative for this coming week. It's going to be positive Democratic news for the entire week. Okay, and some big speeches coming up. Uh, Joe Biden will be the first one. What do you think you'll, we'll hear from him? Well, we're going to get a victory lap out of the president, and he's going to talk a lot about, you talked about 50 years in public office. He's going to want to solidify his legacy as the president, as someone who was in the Senate for 36 years, vice president for eight years, done the work that he thinks is what America needed at the time when he ran for office and that he thinks he's been able to accomplish. And that's something that is going to be significant for him because this is really the last time he's going to have that kind of audience before you get into the mudslinging, if you will, of the political campaign. He'll have a victory lap of sorts at the end of his term if he's able to continue on with his message and to be effective as a speaker through then. But at this point, I think really this is the president's last time to be able to talk and, and really get that kind of, of positive attention out of the Democratic Party and out of the delegates who are going to be there. Okay, Brian, thank you as always for your insight. appreciate it. Thanks, Roger. Brian Cofano is a political science and journalism professor at the University of Cincinnati.